Hey, everybody, and welcome to the 77th episode of the Going Ballistic Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Kleckner. I'm here with the other host, Jason Kleckner. Jason, how you doing, bud? Good. Has it been 77 already? 77 podcasts. Dude, is there something broken in your kitchen? It sounds like your, your sandwich maker is acting up. Yeah, it is. Hopefully, it'll fix itself here shortly. <laughs> how you doing, man? Good. Good, yeah, good, real good. good. I'm getting ready for SHOT Show, and I sound a lot more excited about it than I really am. SHOT Show used to be so much fun, and now every year that goes by, it just ugh, it seems like work now. How sad is that? That is. That shouldn't, it shouldn't be like work. You should be having fun. I know, and I really will be having fun. I shouldn't complain. Uh, it'll be a good time. I just uh, going to be so busy and walking around, but I'll be taking pictures and live streaming the best I can for everyone to follow along. Little disappointed in what the industry is bringing out in new products, new product development. I just, it's the year of the shockwave shotgun. Everybody's coming out with something shockwave. <laughs> Seriously. I, I have my list of new products to check out and I think it's eight or nine long of shockwave products. Shockwave. Yeah. The, this grip on that, they're like, hey, what we did is we took a Mossberg semi auto shotgun and we put a shockwave on it. It's cool. And somebody else is like, yeah, you know what we did? We took a Charles Daly shotgun and we put a shockwave on it and it's cool. And it's just <laughs> like, <laughs> I think there's eight or nine new products that are revolve around the shotgun and the shockwave grip. It's hilarious. That's awesome. So, Actually, I think I'm going to upgrade a rangefinder this year. I've been using that Leopold right. for a while, but man, once I get past like the 600 yard mark with that thing, it just, it doesn't do it. So Have I know you seen you're the new uh, vortex binos that are range finders that just came I out. I was, I was reading about it and they were crazy expensive from the sounds of it. They reflective distances at 5,000 yards. That's, That's amazing. Awesome. Hey, we got a bunch of people making comments on YouTube. Love it. Everybody. Um, Anthony says, make a list of 300 PRC rifles. No problem, Anthony. I'll do it for you right now. It's two. Um, Bergara makes 300 PRC rifles, and Barrett makes 300 PRC rifles. Maybe there'll be some more that come out. 300 PRC hasn't taken off yet, guys. You know why? It's not available yet. You can't buy it. So give it a chance. Give it a chance. Hey, Joshua, you said, new binge listener, first time watching live. Awesome, man. Glad to have you, Joshua, and everybody else. Thank you so much for joining here. I'm actually a little fired up about something, and I think it's going to be the title of this podcast, Jason. Did you see the news last week on Gun University about Feinstein's assault weapon ban? I did. Broke my website twice. For sure twice. Maybe more. The traffic was insane. Just that day alone, I think I had the article up by noon, and just that calendar day alone was something like 35,000 hits on that article. That's a lot for a brand new small website. I was glad to get all the traffic, <laughs> but holy smokes. The good news is the website's faster and better than ever. But um, I kind of want to go through it and talk about it and see what you think about it and see what some of the folks here in the comments think about it. And then if we don't have a, if we don't run out of time or we don't forget, Jackie, my awesome assistant, she came up with an idea and I want to know what you think about it, Jason. All she right. said that maybe next time we should raffle off someone to be a guest on the podcast. Oh, that would be cool. You think that'd be cool? I think it'd be cool. I mean, I'd love to have one of you guys on, but I just don't want it to be weird for you if you just have your list of four questions, we answer them, and then that's it. So oh, I, I think can we'd do have it. to have a contest, and we'd have to have like maybe tryouts or something. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to vet them like a radio station. Yeah, exactly right. We, have, we, could sure. have, we could have Jackie be a call screener. <laughs> that's funny that's funny so anyway so fine science assault weapon ban uh so have you heard about it besides just the topic have you heard about the details of it at all Where, what's your level of comfort no and knowledge of so it? i saw uh, it pop up on facebook through your gun university and i started to browse mm -hmm. through it but i have not finished it okay so the feinstein does this every year this is not much new in the way of her coming out with an assault weapon ban, what's new about it is it comes after some key provisions that are unique, which make me nervous because it's like, well, wait a minute. She does the same old thing every year. Why is this year different? Why are there more provisions in this one? 
And I'm also scared realistically, not out of my mind. I'm realistically scared that Trump is going to go along with it. And the reason I'm scared of that is he's shown he's not exactly a staunch supporter of the Second Amendment. And he has some issues where he's trying to get funding for the wall. He has a Mueller investigation that I think is going crazy. Um, it's off the rails, but it's still a, a headache. And I'm just afraid that he's good enough at deal making that he might just see this and say, tell you what, I'll give you this in exchange for you give me the wall or something like that. It makes me nervous. That's all. Right. So the assault weapon ban, uh, let me kind of just go through it. The, the problem is we don't know the actual assault weapon ban. So I'm already speaking a little in the dark here. But we do know what Diane Feinstein put out as her press release. And so if we can trust whatever staffer she had write her press release for her to describe it, we can understand it. Uh, I talk about in the article on Gun University, go check it out if you haven't seen it yet. Um, just type in assault weapon ban 2019 into Google and I think it comes right up. I give a little bit of background on what an assault weapon ban is or even the term quote unquote assault weapon. Um, and then I talk about what she talks about her press release, including a few quotes from her two best buddies, uh, the Connecticut senators, which is one of the reasons I'm glad to have gotten out of Connecticut as those guys were there. Mm -hmm. And I talk about how this isn't going to solve anything they're going after because they keep saying in the press release, you know, there's too many innocent lives gunned down by these. And they're immediately in the press release saying that all currently owned quote unquote, I'm doing quote fingers for those watching assault weapons will be grandfathered, which means they won't be confiscated according to this press release. Okay. Well, that's just intellectually dishonest. It's either you think that AR-15s are the reason that people are dying. If you really think that, I kind of, in a weird way, don't blame her. I disagree with her. I think she's wrong. But if she truly believes that, I don't blame her for trying to get rid of them. Right? I mean, Jason, if you thought there was something that was legitimately endangering your family, wouldn't you do everything you could to stop it or get rid of it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, mean, I would, right? I mean, I can't blame her for that. I mean, I tell my constitutional law students, or what I used to tell them, because I don't teach anymore. I finally said enough because of too much travel and not enough time with the family. I used to tell them that the Westboro Baptist Church, you know, that crazy church that, you know, protests soldiers' you know, funerals, that horrible, disgusting church. Right. They better be doing that protest because that's what they believe. So if they truly in their hearts believe that you're going to go to hell because of a certain reason, they'd actually be <laughs> all sorts of computer <laughs> noise that's going from Jason's in there. Sorry, guys. Um, it's like almost like I had a good thought. Uh, the noise came out. <laughs> that ruined it. <laughs> if they I'm actually, sorry. it's no, I mean, it's like I had the good thought that was the noise. Like the more you know. Um, if they truly believe that, well, then they better get out there and try and stop you from doing it. In, in a, I, I know it's a, a attenuated point, and I, I think I make it better in class because I'm able to draw it out and make it part of the lecture. But if they truly believe that, then they'd be worse people by not protesting. They'd be worse people by not trying to save you in a weird way. So if she, Diane Feinstein, truly believes that assault weapons are evil and their our kids are dying because of them, this ban just doesn't even make sense. One, if you're going to ban them, then try to get rid of them again you'd be wrong you'd be infringing on our second amount rights and you shouldn't be able to do it but at least that would make kind of sense even though you're wrong but to say that the most common firearm that's out there in america it is is the most common firearm we have out there to just leave all those alone again i'm happy she does it i'm not proposing that we don't do it it just doesn't make any sense and then all the things they do propose to ban they ban a bunch of objects jason am i too far off the rails or am i making sense no, no, you're making total sense. Okay. So she she's crazy. All right, here we go. So what is banned by the Assault Weapons Bill of 2019? So in there, I actually make a couple notes before I get into the list of what's banned. I say um, the ban in the current state will not affect anyone who currently owns the banned firearms or magazines. However, the firearms and magazines that we're about to talk about, they can no longer be made, imported, nor transferred, meaning sold, purchased, or given. Okay, But then later in the press release, it says, in order to sell one of these firearms, you have to go through a background check through an FFL. Which, right. I so read that. <laughs> it said you can't sell them, and then it said this is how you sell them. So based on that logic, it says the firearms, the not the magazines. I'm assuming that means then magazines are the only things that will never be able to be transferred or sold again, but that ARs will. 
but it's going to be only ones that were grandfathered that were made before the date. So it'll be like pre ban ones, I guess. Again, we don't have the actual language of the law. And then the next step is there's a whole list of items here that aren't firearms that are also banned, which tells me those will not be allowed to be grandfathered because that provision is not there, right? So let's go look right. at it. Uh, the first one, first thing it bans is certain assault weapons by name. It includes a list of 205 military style assault firearms. Okay, first off, Here's another intellectually dishonest section is if you ban anything by name, all you have to do is change the name and it's no longer banned. Right. I think that's how the cult sportster came around. Someone will correct me in the comments, but it was one of the cults was banned in the first Clinton era assault weapons ban. And so they just changed the name of it. And now all of a sudden it's not banned. Okay. So that's crazy to ban them by name. Another thing <laughs> is you also get guns in there that aren't really problems. So like in Connecticut, these two idiots from Connecticut, they're supporting her. They banned the Remington 7615. That's the pump action rifle that takes AR 15 magazines. They banned it because it looked like an AR 15 because it had AR 15 magazines. And in the Connecticut law, it actually says the following semi automatic rifles are banned Remington 7615. So, again, a problem with banning things by name is they don't know what's going on. All right. So, the next part of the ban, which we all could see coming, is certain firearms based on their characteristics. So, like typical so weapons bans we see before, it's something that has. Jason, dude, <laughs> you're so loud tonight with your microphone. Sorry, I was trying to cover it up because I'm trying to reboot the computer. Sorry, everybody. That, My that computer's worse. acting up and I'm trying to get into that, the That the was chats. definitely worse. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so it's any fire, semi automatic firearm that has a detachable magazine and has one of the following characteristics. So we know these features based tests. You know, it's got a folding collapsible stock, a pistol grip, a foregrip, a barrel shroud, or a threaded barrel. Uh, it's a problem. So we're going to go back to apparently the Clinton era assault weapons ban type air 15s would be allowed. You know, the neutered ones would be allowed. And if you want one that's not neutered, you better get one now. Uh, then also what's banned as assault pistols weighing 50 ounces or more. To me, that seems like they seem to be going after air 15 style, you know, handguns, you know, the, the pistol braces and things like that. Uh, magazines over 10 rounds in capacity will be banned. Uh, same thing grandfathered though so if you want some get some i have some links to some good deals in gun university you can follow those and check out those the prices and the, the deals you got there the next things that starts to get really scary if that wasn't scary enough is pistol stabilizing braces not that those being gone would be a huge problem i think it would be because it'd be infringement on our rights i'm saying i'm not worried about the actual pistol stabilizing braces i'm just worried that they're going after an item and just outright banning it just like they're doing with the bump fire stocks by rulemaking so pistol stabilizing braces would be banned. It's unclear whether they'd be grandfathered or not. The next one is folding or collapsing stocks. It doesn't say folding or collapsing stocks as a feature on a rifle. It says folding or collapsing stocks will be banned. Don't know how to interpret that. Does that mean now your rifle is not grandfathered anymore because the stock that's on it is banned? So, so, now so many questions. The Q rifle is banned, essentially. Well, no, if that's how it's interpreted. Remember, this is a press release. Right, right. So it may have been some staffer that just wrote that, and it was really just one of the features list from before, so we don't know for sure. Um, and then the next thing is banned is bump fire stocks. And I wrote, this is very interesting. Is the inclusion of bump fire stocks in this ban a sign that they agree that the current ban done by the president, by fiat, is invalid? Meaning, are they, are they admitting that the rulemaking that banned a bump fire stocks is not valid and therefore they're doing this? This is another reason I'm afraid that Trump might take it. I'm seeing all the comments right now that say, oh, it'll be killed in the Senate, dead on arrival, never happening, Feinstein's crazy, she's just posturing, no way it'll happen. Uh, guys, we've had assault weapons bans before. And we have a president that is not protected the Second Amendment. Instead, he's actually doing rulemaking. He's like making King Trump gun bans that the NRA asked for. I don't know why you guys are so confident this is dead on arrival. Trust me, I want you to be right, but I don't understand where your confidence is coming from. Because, again, this has exactly happened in very recent American history. So why would you think it couldn't happen again? And two, we have not a friendly administration and group of people that would be supporting this. And three, uh, the president is maybe backed into a corner with bump fire stocks because the firearms policy coalition is suing about the rulemaking. Well, here's a chance for Feinstein to be like, Hey, president Trump, don't worry about your rulemaking lawsuit here. Let's just do it by law. And then the whole rulemaking issue goes away. I've seen president Trump avoid losing. 
he has made deals to avoid losing on something. This is his chance to not lose by accepting this plan because now he can't lose on the bonfire stock rule because it goes away. Uh, this is his chance to maybe negotiate for shutdown, for the wall, for all sorts of stuff. That's what scares me, guys. I'm glad you guys are confident. I wish I could join you. I'm at least a little bit nervous. Um, then I go in to talk about the other requirements, the assault weapon ban that talks about how assault weapons, I guess, can be sold after all, even though it says that they can't. And going through you know, a background check, uh, of course, I make a plug in the article to Rocket FFL for people they want to get that. And then I talk about exemptions. It looks like FFLs will probably be exempted, but it's not clear. So if you have an <laughs> FFL, you might be able to be exempted because if you have to go through background checks to an FFL, that means FFLs have no problems acquiring and dealing with those. Um, and what can you do about it? So contact your legislators, contact your, your representatives, get your voice out there, you know, go donate to the Farms Policy Coalition. And if you're worried about it, which you may not be, and you've been wanting to buy some magazines anyway, and you're like, you know, I need another 10 magazines. Go buy them now before the rush, before everything goes like that. Oh, and Casey brought up a great point. The new attorney general loves gun control. The attorney general that Trump just appointed is actually one of the ones I think that was the responsible for the import ban on all these scary guns, which is why we can't have a whole lot of imported rifles. So rifles we can make here, we can't import. Um, that was that attorney general. And Trump just appointed them. So an anti-gun attorney general, anti-gun chief legal officer and law enforcement officer for the country just got appointed and he is rabidly anti-gun. Casey says, and the Brady Bill. I'm not sure if that's true, but I believe you. So responsible for the Brady Bill too. And he's got an awesome quote out there that says he would completely support the banning of all semi-automatic firearms because we need to be tougher on crime. Guys, <laughs> okay, call me Chicken Little if you want, but I think this is a perfect storm. What do you think, Jason? Talk me off. Well, the no, 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 absolutely. I agree with you. And like, go to the magazines, for instance. You can't buy them, can't sell them. What happens when it quits working? Are you allowed to make them? I mean, apparently not. Can't manufacture them. So, yep. I mean, once you kill that, then you're going to load it one at a time, apparently. And I've seen some it. funny things online where people are taking 30 round AR magazines and taking a marker and calling them 50 Beowulf magazines. Cause if you load it with 50 Beowulf, it only holds like six rounds. <laughs> like, I don't know what you're talking about officer. That's a 50 Beowulf magazine. So sorry, Aaron, I'm sorry to depress you. These everyone's right. It probably won't go anywhere. I, I guess I'm overdoing it to make sure everyone's aware of the issue. Uh, if I had to bet on this, it'd be close to half and half, probably more likely that it didn't happen. So just to make sure you guys understand, I'm saying the sky's falling because I'm trying to get everyone to wake up and see what's going on. I don't really think if I had to bet like personal money on this, that it would pass. I actually think there's a better chance it doesn't. I'm just scared because we're getting much closer to 50-50 chance of happening than we have been in a long time. So, you know, you mentioned getting hold of your state legislators and uh, appointed officers and getting your voice out there. Other than the NRA, you'd mentioned one. Is there any other groups that you could support or get yeah. a hold of? Firearms Policy Coalition. That's who I'm really behind right now. Okay. They're actually being advocates for our rights right now. I think they're being the biggest advocates for the Second Amendment right now is the Firearms Policy Coalition. I think the NRA is not helping anybody right now. I think the NRA is great at what it does and has been great and is an amazing asset and tool for us. I also think I should not be, because I'm getting a lot of people mad at me for coming out against the NRA, is I'm not really against the NRA. I'm against what they're doing right now and their leadership. They need to change, right? I can still support an organization and understand how it's important and that we need it. At the same time, say that they need a leadership change and not be afraid to go, hey, everybody, look, the emperor is not wearing clothes. You guys are all afraid to say it, not you know, to not say it or to say it. I'm not. Um I think they need to write themselves because they're also supporting red flag laws right now. So as far as I can tell, the NRA is supporting red flag laws all across the country, which is uh, taking guns away from anyone who law enforcement is suspicious about. And I forget who it was. The NRA said some sort of comment, a spokesman, like a Chris Cox type person, someone major in the NRA said, Oh, don't worry. We still support due process. You know, like a way to get your guns back after it's over. I'm like, wait a minute. Due process is not how to get your guns back. Due process is how not to lose your rights in the first place. But right. Oh well. 
And then we've had a couple articles come out. Uh, Dwayne Liptek wrote an article or an essay about uh, the NRA's choices. And it was actually really good. I really liked hearing his views. He's, he seems like a smart guy and he made some really good points. I can't really completely disagree with him. Um, he kind of made the points like, Hey, look, we can't, the NRA can't just, you know, say, you know, no gun bans and stick its, you know, head in the sand. It's, it's got to negotiate. It's got to try and deal with things. There's a lot of strategy going on, which I get. And he's right. There's a strategy that goes on and they do have access to legislators and they are the 800 pound grill in the room. However, what good is it having an 800 pound grill in the room if it's not vociferously standing up for your rights? Right. So it's, it's, and then Marion Hammer, that lady needs to go away. Former NRA president. She wrote another essay suspiciously around the same time with a lot of the same kind of tone and language as Dwayne Liptex. Kind of like they happened to get motivated or asked to do it, I'm assuming. And she just, I can't believe she's still around the firearms industry. She is, she's the one that came out against Adam Kraut. Uh, she's the one that hasn't showed up to the last eight board meetings and collects a paycheck. Uh, I just don't get it. So th- these folks need to wake up because we need them right now. Um, yeah, man. All right. I, I, I'm done. <laughs> you don't have to be. No, it's all valid points and it is scary. I mean, I, I agree. Well, at least in my, my heart and soul, I, I want to believe that that's never going to happen, but I mean, it could, I mean, the scary thing that I see we right now is late nineties, man, late nineties, yeah. early two thousands. We had an assault weapons ban. And, and they're already making state changes where you have to be 21 now to buy the rifles. I'd have never thought I'd see that either, especially when you're 18 year old can join the military. I mean, I, I don't understand that at all. Well, here's my problem is you can't buy rifles or handguns at 18. How is the 20 year old wife of a deployed military member supposed to protect herself and her child in her home? Right. She's 20. She can't buy a handgun or rifle. And some people point out, well, no, that just means you have to be 21 to buy it from an FFL. And you go, Oh, great. So you'd rather, <laughs> right. You'd rather back alley gun deals. Smart. Right. No. So I, you know, like I said, I, I had never thought that I'd see that change in certain States from 18 to 21. Yeah. Um, yep. And I think Very if they're going to go that far, they should, I guess, change our military to where you can't enlist till you're 21. Yeah. That wouldn't work though. It's, nope. It's, it wouldn't. it's real hard. It's real hard to convince a 21 year old to run through a brick wall. Yep. It's easy to do that to an 18 year old. <laughs> I've been there, but in the same token, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I could rant all day about that. <sighs> I don't know what to do. Anthony asked, so what do we do about it? Well, go use the link on our, on our show right here in YouTube and go to Palmetto state army or go to Brownells or, you know, go pick up some magazines. If you want some, don't make a huge run on it unless you really need that many, which you shouldn't need that many. Um, and then, Go support the Firearms Policy Coalition. Go support the NRA. Go to the NRA and support them and say, hey, look, I'm supporting you because I believe you can do the right thing. And by the way, you're not doing the right thing. I mean, we owe that to our family members. We owe that to our friends. Jason, if if I was off track, I'd want you to come tell me. I wouldn't you just wouldn't want you just to stop supporting me and and you know cut me out of the family. I'd want you to pull me aside and be like, hey, dude, I don't like what you're doing. You're not on the right path. Yeah. Oh, oh don't worry. I, here, I have no problems telling you that. <laughs> right. But you see what I'm saying? So if we treat the NRA like our family, great. Let's do it. Let's not disown them, but let's all stop ignoring the problem and let's go get it fixed. Right. And I don't know. We had an interesting conversation, me and some buddies a long time ago about how and and it's kind of to our own faults where most of your gun right activists are mm. out making a fuss yelling, screaming, doing whatever they have to do to make their point or be heard, Mm -hmm. whether they're accurate about what they're saying or not. And most of the, you know, gun toting people like ourselves are very reserved because we don't need to go out and speak that because, you know, we're not out to hurt anybody. Are we coming at it with, you know, facts of what we're talking about, but we don't, we don't scream and make a big fit or make a big scene like that. And I don't know, maybe we should. Does that make sense? Am I explaining that right? It does. I think some people are afraid of it because you don't want to lose your gun rights because you're getting arrested at some rally, you know, being obnoxious. Which, well, I mean, that's that's you know. kind of how they're getting it done. Well, guys, exactly and right. And I'm, I'm all about you know having respectful debate, 
and having, you know, intellectual conversations and trying to convince people of your ways and things like that. But I don't think we're there yet. Don't worry anybody, but there's a certain point where that's, it's too late for that. Right. There's, there's a certain point in the American revolution where the Americans said, you know, enough. No, you're not taking our guns away. <laughs> right. You know? So anyway, one of my uh, my favorite videos online. If I can ever find it again, I'll, I'll I'll show it to you. But it's it's a younger gal and one of her classmates, and they go around and set up a poster with guns on it. Some of them are from Star Wars and other movies, okay. so fictitious guns, and a couple other real guns like the Air Fifteen. And so they start asking people, you know, do you think guns murder people? Well, yeah, I do. Well, which one on this board do you think kills the most people? You know, and they're all picking out fake guns. They have no idea which ones are real, right. which ones are curious. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my biggest problem with any of that stuff is they're, they're talking about things. They have no idea what they're talking about. Yeah. That's true. And I, I support that. I might be unpopular when I say this, but it's fun to laugh at them when they say that, but, um, I'm not against drug laws, but if I want to be against drug laws, I don't have to know everything about every single drug to be against them. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, I could be against abortion and not have to know the names of every tool used in abortion, you know? So I agree with you, but at the same time, I'm trying to see the other side too. Yeah. I I, I can argue against things. You know, I'm against the Holocaust, but I probably couldn't cite every stat correctly, you know, about it. No, but even with your drug analogy, it's outlawed. And does it work? Oh, no, of course not. Well, and I don't think it should be outlawed. I think you should be allowed to do whatever stupid thing you want to do to yourself. That's kind of the part of freedom, right? Right. So people are now trying to get me to run for president and to run for the director <laughs> of the ATF. I'd go, I'd go be the director of the ATF. Absolutely. That'd be fun. It would be a challenge. It would be really tough with all the politics and everything, but hands down, I'd do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we just got to get you on the ballot. That's it, right? Well, you just got to get appointed by the president. I need to stop talking bad about President Trump, but I don't think I really want that job. It, w- it wouldn't pay enough to put up with everything you got to put up with there. <laughs> you mean it's not like the no, movies? Works, dude, this makes me so sad. I was starting tonight all excited to talk to you on the podcast. Now we're going to end up a socialist country without guns. I don't get it. Well... Let's change the theme for a little bit then. Hey, I'm going to change the theme. Have I ever, uh, have I ever asked you this? What did socialist countries use to light their homes before candlelight? <laughs> what? Electricity. Electricity. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> well, here, right. let Look, me let me get back to my rangefinder question. All right. So. Right now, you're still real happy with using the SIG? Yeah, that SIG's still amazing, dude. The, the SIG Kilo 2400 ABS is awesome. Now, there, I've noticed there's two different ones, right? Or it seems like there's two different SIG Kilos. Is there only one? I think there is. There's only one SIG Kilo 2400 ABS. Okay. I think there's a Kilo 2200 or something like that, or maybe less. I'm not sure. But that's that's still your kind of go to right now. Yeah, um, I'm starting to see the benefit of laser rangefinder in your binoculars. I uh, yeah. okay. Well, let's do it this way. How much was your Sig Kilo? Free. Well, let's just say if you were to go buy a Sig Kilo, I have no idea. Three, four hundred bucks, maybe higher. A Sig Kilo, twenty four hundred ABS. I thought I saw one on sale a while back for like 400 bucks. No way. Maybe, maybe it was the other one. Yeah, you're, yeah. Uh-uh. Uh, 1499 at Cabela's. Okay. And the new binoculars by Leopold. Look, looks are, like you could find them for a little over a thousand bucks online at places. Okay. And then the new Leopold binoculars that are coming out, they're talking ballpark two grand. Oh, the Vortex ones? No, no, no. The Leopold ones. I haven't seen the Leopold ones or the Leopold ones. I don't even know. I was talking about the, the Vortex range. Oh, range. no, no, no. I saw uh, Leopold is supposed to have some new great 
laser rangefinder binoculars. It's like the big talk right now. I don't know even know if it's going to make it to shot show or not. All right. Well, I'm looking at the Vortex Fury 5000s. 5,000 yard ranging. That's amazing. Reflective range to 5,000 yards on a deer, you get 1,600 yards out of them. That's amazing. I'll check out the loophole ones too. I just, I never liked the idea of a rangefinder and binos in my head because I always wanted super clear crystal binos because binos are so, so powerful of a tool. And then Putting a laser rangefinders usually have like grainy screens or not the nicest, you know, clarity through them. So I'm like, oh no, putting that in there, you'd ruin the crisp, clear precision of them. And now that I've seen through a couple, you know, rangefinding binos, it's like, oh, they're actually still gorgeous and clear. And why in the world would you want to find the animal, then have to put down the binos, then pick up your rangefinder and refine it under a different magnification just to range it? It just makes complete sense. No, and it does make sense because. I mean, shoot, man, when I'm looking through my little range finder, it's got a zoom power of one or two. So it's kind of yeah. hard to get on something way out there and be accurate. That, that and refine it because you already found it. Now you got to pick, drop that down, pull something else out, pick that up and try and refine the, the animal. Why not just have one thing in your hands? It's starting to make a lot of sense. I don't know why we haven't done this before. Maybe it's because they couldn't get the clarity you know, either. But the last couple I've seen, both uh, a loophole set recently up in Wyoming and uh, not the Fury 5000s, but the Furies before the 5000s. I don't know which ones they were. Um, they're pretty amazing. Well, maybe I'll go that route. I mean, but it's kind of hard to, to go that route, too, when you've already got a really nice pair of binoculars. Yeah, it is. So that's... I don't understand. But yeah. it's like, so you know, buy a second piece of equipment to carry on with you or just have one? I don't know. Yeah. I guess hey, I could our, our giveaway is going good, man. Oh, yeah? yeah? Yeah, yeah, We got a lot of people signed up for it so far. Um, I think it's been a few thousand signed up for the uh, rifle so far. The Radical Firearms Air 15 that we're giving away because you guys using the links in these podcast show notes and uh, following the links at the bottom of these videos and things like that, you give us a little bit of juice. You, it doesn't cost you any more money, it, but it gives the podcast, you know, a little percentage points here and there and it added up and to, uh, you know, a whopping few hundred dollars. And Jason, and I decided, you know what, let's put it back in, <laughs> which is, Hey, that's better. Than nothing. It's you that's guys right. support was awesome. And we thought better than put that in our pockets. We figured we'd do buy the best thing we could buy for that money and give it away. So you got a radical firearms, AR 15 M lock, full length handguard, um, the minimalist stock. It's got some really cool features on it. Uh, so it's a good value. It's entry level, but it's a good value for it. You want an AR-15. Um, yeah, I don't want to tell you how many entries it is because I think it might discourage people from entering. Well, but I want you to enter and you can get way more points for referring your friends. I think you get like 20 points for entering, but you get like 900 points if you get someone to come in or out from your link. So you have all the benefit in the world of actually it's better to win by sending people to the to the contest you, you you get a way better chance of winning the more people you send rather than doing anything else and our other competition for the magtech ammo which dude getting ready with magtech for shot show i'm so glad that we have a relationship with magtech because the people in that company are some of the most down to earth awesome just neat people uh Mike from, from MagTech has turned into a close personal friend because of this, just for being on hunts with them and stuff like that. And I'm just super happy that they keep supporting us. And we gave away a box of Jason's and I's, one of our their favorite loads, that uh, 77 grain 223. I keep calling it 223. I think they corrected me. It's 556. Five, yeah, on the box is 556. Five, five, All right, 556 five, ammo, uh, 50 round box of it. We just we give away a box every week, it seems like, because it's a popular. Uh, prize so i haven't changed it and i just uh drew the winner it is ryan m from denver colorado matter of fact he won for referring greg w it tells me what the actual winning you know entry or thing was so because he referred a friend and his friend came and entered he got more points so he won so ryan m from denver colorado congrats man jackie will be in contact with you soon and we'll get you some ammo and you're going to love it, man. I love that stuff. 
and then go back to gununiversity.com and check out the competitions and enter and see what's going on there. Now, the problem with competitions, the problem with giveaways is it sometimes backfires because it encourages people not to buy the product because they want to hurry up and win it. So, guys, I appreciate your support, MagTech. I, I went and shot the IDPA match a couple weeks ago. I think I'm actually going to go shoot another IDPA match in a couple nights. Uh, I was there and happily giving away and letting people try out the MagTech ammo I bring with me because why not? I'm like, hey, guys, here's some 9 mil. Shoot it. Tell me what you think. You know, go, go, so, go support the company. I really appreciate it. Now, and I'll be in their booth signing books at SHOT Show, and they're free. So you come by the MagTech booth and get a free book. Meet me. Someone already asked in the comments when I'm doing a meet and greet at SHOT Show. Uh, yep, I'm doing a meet and greet at MagTech's booth. Apparently, the time was wrong, though. Jackie had it in my calendar wrong. So when I put it on Instagram, I, made, I, I followed that. It's not 4 p.m. local time. It'll be 2 p.m. local time. I think it's the 24th. You got to go look at my you know, Instagram or on Facebook. I have the events there or go check out for MagTech. But I'll be there live in the booth uh, seeing people. I'll be all over SHOT Show. So if you see me, say hello. It means a lot. So we appreciate it. Hey, Hydro Life said he bought 5,000 rounds of MagTech 9mm because I said so. Wow. That's awesome, dude. I actually, I feel kind of bad. Not because you got a bad deal. You got a great deal. I just, I got to remember the influence that we have, Jason. <laughs> well, I ordered a couple thousand rounds. It's not five thousand, but a couple thousand. But I was going to point out also for the people entering the contest because I don't know what happened last week or was it the week before uh, when there was a question whether or not you could send them the ammo. I think somebody won in California. Is that I, correct? I, yeah, I assume Jackie figured that out. It just has to go to an FFL, right? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. But with that being said, if you are going to enter the contest, please make sure you are able to receive it. Oh, yeah. Good point. Yeah, you have to be able to win the product. Yeah. Oh, hey, Jared has a good question. Uh, Brody has one, too. He says, why don't I like 300 Win Mag? I just think it's not a fun cartridge to shoot. I don't like the belt because technically you're supposed to headspace off the belt, but some manufacturers kind of hybrid headspace off the belt and the shoulder. So it's, I think it's more difficult to reload for. I think it's more difficult to get the tolerances just right, to get the shoulders and the freeboard jump right, because that's an irrelevant measurement really on the chamber for precision when it's off the belt. I just don't like belted cartridges if you can avoid them. I think it was an old way of doing things when you had cartridge designs that were less than ideal. Now you have superior cartridge designs. I'd go for it. But if you like it, do it, dude. 300 Win Mag, you can't go wrong with it. You'll find ammo anywhere. It'll kill any animal you go hunting for. It'll be great. So you'll be fine with that one. Jared's question is, uh, Ryan, I'm thinking about throwing some Krylon on my AR. Can you run through how you prep and what kind of spray pattern do you use? Um, I like to prep as little as possible because a fresh Krylon paint job on a rifle, I think, looks horrible. It doesn't look right to me until it looks like it's been drugged behind a truck. <laughs> so, you know, whenever someone has a brand new painted gun. They look like the new guy. So you look like the cherry, you know, having a brand new painted gun. I remember we, we'd show up on a, to take over on a deployment for another Ranger battalion and they'd have their rifles all be beat to hell and ours would all be perfect. And then vice versa. A few months later, they'd all be, you know, beat to hell again. So I don't prep it too much because I don't care about it coming off that much. Um, I always uh, start light on the, the pattern and then start adding darkness to it. I don't start dark. I think it's a lot easier that way. So I love the Krylon camouflage colors. They have like a tan, a brown, and a green. So I get those three colors and maybe double the tan, so two cans of the tan, and clean the gun off, close the ejection port cover, take a foamy earplug and stick it in the barrel. Uh, if you need to, put some masking tape in the mag well or just throw a magazine in there. Now you got a magazine that gets painted too. Uh, tape off your optics, you know, if you, if you have them on there to make sure you're okay. And just take your time and paint the whole thing tan let it dry, maybe do another coat on it. So it's really good on that, you know, matte, you know, tannish color. And then I just come at it with the brown and I do stripes, but not close. I kind of do them far away. And then I'm like, well, that's too light. And I get a little bit closer. I'm like, well, that's a little spritzy. I get a little bit closer still. I'm like, all right, that's better. And I kind of do some different lines and angles because the idea is not to do a tiny camo pattern, like with leaves and stuff that will just look like a blend of mush far away. The idea is to get big blocks of changes. So maybe I'm just guessing four 
or five stripes of that brown at different angles. So far away, it breaks up the shape of the rifle. And then I'll come in with the green and do a couple more stripes or spritz away from there and just make it look weird. I don't care. It's going to scratch off after a while and you come on and paint it again. And once you have like 12 layers deep of Krylon after five years, it looks really cool, I think, worn off all over on a gun. So don't have it look pretty. Don't be afraid to just get in there and do it. Worst case scenario, it's actually pretty easy to clean off. Uh, you can use like Shooter's Choice and Hoppies on a cleaning patch and it'll seriously clean the paint right off your gun eventually. So don't worry about it too much. Um, just go for, if you want it, go for the battle-worn look. That's way cooler. If you're looking for a pristine finish and a look to your gun, don't crawl on it. Go get it Cerakoted and it'll last a lot longer. I've never done the crawl on. So I have, I have no words of wisdom. I'll leave that to you. If you do a bolt gun, make sure you tape up the bolt. I take the bolt and I run masking tape around the bolt and then put it back on the gun so you don't get paint all over there so it doesn't get a little gummy in there. Right. Uh, and then on your turrets, you want to tape off your elevation numbers, tape off your windage numbers, but who cares about the focus knob because you shouldn't be looking at the focus knob anyway. You should be looking through the scope when you use it. You right. Tape off, tape off your lenses and go to town. Put a foamy earplug in the barrel and have fun. See, we were... Uh... Not to, not to change the subject off of that, but we were joking, me and the boys, um, about how I think what our new mission for you is, is to get you to be a character or a voice on Call of Duty. I know you're not a video gamer, but we game a lot. And we were That'd laughing awesome. how funny it would be to have you one of the Call of Duty characters. I don't even Plus, know what you're supposed to sound like, though, because I don't sound anything like what a cool guy operator is supposed to sound like. Yeah, some of them don't sound that way to begin with. Well, there you go. But it, it kind of brought me up on that because uh, some of the things you can do on the new Call of Duty is you can actually go in and paint your guns, paint them all different colors so they're unique. So when you run around or somebody picks them up. Oh, that's pretty cool. I've played Call of Duty once, maybe, maybe twice. I sat down like, wait, what do I do? And I was the guy that was like running around with my gun pointing in the air, bumping into the walls. I cannot <laughs> figure it out. I have no finesse when it comes to a video game controller. I'm I'm very digital. I'm either on or off. I can't get the finesse on there. <laughs> uh, Brody says he appreciated the trigger control video. Awesome, man. Yeah, the NSSF keeps dropping these videos, and then I happen to be looking for something, and someone will mention it, and four days later, I find out they dropped another video of me. So the NSSF just dropped a video on trigger control four days ago. I think it came out really well. Uh, I'm talking fast now because I talk fast sometimes. I'm talking really fast in that video. I realized that, and I just saw that bolt running on that gun. I'm like, oh, I love that gun. <laughs> Make, makes me so thankful all the all the little steps and details I did on that collecting rifle. Hey, speaking of the collecting rifle, where is it like a build as it's ordered type thing now? For my ARs? No, for, for the, the bolt guns. Yeah, build as 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 it comes in because I, as you know, I don't want to be in the rifle building business right now. I'm kind of doing it half because I want to have nice rifles for myself and my friends, uh, a little bit for the marketing because it's fun to talk about. So it's kind of a, an exclusive deal. I'm going to bend down and pick up something real quick. Hold on. Yep. You can talk, Jason. It doesn't have to be quiet. For no, I'm trying to figure out what you're doing over there. What gun are you going to show? Um, one to make you jealous. Oh. It's not even a gun. That's like every episode. Yeah, you're always true. holding up something fun. That's true. You see that right there? Ah, oh, it looks good. You like that? matchup let's see if i can get it close enough you see the logo on it can you see the logo on the magwell barely no get a little closer oh there you go there's the c you see the c there and then flip around this side just look how i just think it blends in nice the upper and the hangers for everyone listening i'm showing up see how that the upper and the lower blend in together Mm -hmm. all the lines the hand guard goes in there it's nice look at that it's kleckner hydrogen rifle nashville tennessee is that number three uh is it what you mean is this yours yeah. Yeah, actually it is. <laughs> uh, there's no surprise now. I know what you're making. Actually, no, I take that back. That's how old I'm getting. It's number six. Dude, oh. I can't tell the difference between a three and a six. <laughs> See, there's like a white thing there. So my serial numbers are 0000000006 <laughs> 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 for this one. Yep, no. Well, this could be either one, dude. Uh, it could be. So what barrel? Have you come to a decision? I haven't decided on yours yet. 
There's no barrel in this one. But anyway, I just thought you'd think it was cool seeing the set together. Oh, it looks are. awesome. I yeah. I remember seeing the digital pictures of it. You you did I, see those? Oh yeah. You sent me the CAD yeah. drawings before it was yeah, actually they made, made. It came out nice. The, the fact that the every line of like even just the handguard lining up into the upper is really cool for it to line up there. And yeah, I'm excited about them. A little flared bagwell on it. And there's 10, and I think that'll be it. Same thing with the bolt guns. I just it's really fun to play around with, and I'm excited that people are excited about it. But uh, you guys want me writing books and doing courses and stuff like that, not making rifles that you can get honestly anywhere. <laughs> I think they're well made and they're like nice components, but I mean, I don't know how to build a rifle better than anybody else. Oh, come on. I know the pros out there, they know better than me. Yeah, so you would go wrong with those. No, not at all. So trigger. Uh for what? For the ARs? Yeah. Uh still Geisley. I'm a Geisley AR trigger guy. Now Trigger Tech reached out and said they wanted to send me this is a few months ago. Like, hey, we gotta send you one of our AR triggers because we gotta get you on board. Yes, they do. Right. I love their triggers. Their triggers are amazing. I think that that is the trigger tech in a 700 is the only way to go. Only way to go. But I just don't like the way they feel for ARs. You like single stage triggers though, don't you? No, not necessarily. I mean, I, I love the, the two stage guys leaves that I have in there, but on an assault type rifle, uh, on a build that a buddy of mine did, I preferred his trigger tech trigger to my guys trigger. Hmm. Now for the precision shooting. Yeah. I take this two two stage all day long over the single stage. Cause I like taking that creep out of it. Right. But so I, if it's single stage, you're going trigger tech. But if it's two stage, you're still staying Geisley. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. So for precision AR, I'd go Geisley. If for it's an assault style AR, I'd go trigger tech. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I'll have to try one. Yeah, you'll have to try one. And I don't know what it is, but I I tried the Geisley in it and in mine and shot both guns and and the assault style. You know where you're sitting. You know three shots here, three shots there. I think the trigger tech trigger was better. All right. I'll give it an un- honest uh, uh, opinion. Justin asked, what about Timney triggers? Um, I hear people say a lot of good things about them, but this is going to sound really bad, but I've never had a Timney trigger I've liked. They just either aren't consistent. They are I just something about the feel, the quality. I just not a Timney trigger guy, but that's personal preference. So um, you might like Chevy trucks. Go get a Chevy truck. Uh, I, I don't mean to talk you out of it. Uh, there's nothing that I know that's wrong about them. I have to say you, you must avoid it. Just not my cup of tea. Uh, and I've even had a few people that weren't converts yet. They said, oh, no, Timneys are great. And guys in the industry. And I they said, why don't you like the Timney? And that was one of the things I said. I said, believe it or not, just right when you think you like the trigger, it's going to be inconsistent and it'll change on you. And they actually asked some of their operations engineering folks about their success with t- the Timney triggers that they use. And they laughed when the feedback from the engineers were, oh, they're all right, but man, it takes a while to get one that actually will pass the QC because they're inconsistent <laughs> on the pull. I was like, what? What? No, that's yeah. like, that's, that's an N of one, you know, for opinions, but just not my cup of tea. Not, not my thing. I, I feel like they're probably better than factory triggers, but they just always seem like they're the cheap version of an upgrade. I mean, what do, you, what do you think, Jason? Am I being too harsh on them? No. Uh, I think Timney Triggers were basically a name when they came out. They were they were kind of the trigger, you know what I mean, that was affordable and common, and you could throw it in your hunting rifle, and then a lot of hunting rifles started coming with them. Mm-hmm. So they did really good as far as a name goes. Uh, but I, I agree with you. The two that I've shot, I didn't think they were anything spectacular either. But – it's Again, going, okay, that's a trigger. And you shoot yeah. like a trigger tech on a bolt gun, and you're like, holy crap. Exactly. Go look at my trigger pull video. Go look at that trigger pull video and watch that trigger and tell me you wouldn't want one of those. I have one. Yeah, there you go. You're right. So, anyway. Yeah, well, all right. We're on, a, we're on a better tone here. We're talking about gun videos and cool triggers. and. So, here's what I ask of trigger tech make them for more guns. And I would <laughs> stick it in more guns. Absolutely. What, what else do you want it one for? 
Oh man, I would throw one in my 783 in a heartbeat. I'd throw one in my Marlin. I would. Why would Trigger Tech make a trigger for 70? The trigger would be as much as the rifle. I'd still put it in there. That's how much <laughs> I like the trigger. <laughs> my 721s. I, I, yeah, That's I right. really love my Trigger Tech trigger. I absolutely believe it took me to the next step as far as my long range shooting goes just oh, in the wow. trigger. That's a huge endorsement right there. I mean, I was shooting good, but I, I really think it, it really pushed me to that next level. That's awesome. Swapping that trigger out. Well, we've come up on an hour here, man. Anything you want, any saved rounds or anything else we need to talk about? Mm, I, got no, my, I, I just, got my list of things to cover at shot. I really do. It's like already 25 things long. Of products I gotta go try out. I'll be there at uh Media Day at the range. I know I just cut you off. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, that's fine. I'd say just keep an eye open if there's anything new and cool rangefinder wise. Uh before I pull the trigger. I'll wait. Hear some feedback on what you have to say. That's about okay. the only real thing I'm looking for as far I as I don't know how I'll be able to try about that there, but I'll, I'll definitely uh, if you can. I know you'll be busy yeah. too. Yeah. Or if, right, you know, Vort Vortex, yeah, something new under the radar. They, they, you know, just want me to look at for them. I'd be happy to do it, Vortex. So, Justin asked me, "Have I ever tried a Christensen Arms rifle?" Yes, yes, I have. There's your answer. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are awesome. We've had we people are jumping off, but we've got forty people left live right now that's pretty cool love having you guys on here love seeing the comments i hope we uh, follow along the best we can for them i know we miss a bunch but we try our best and we love you guys being a part of this jason i just every week that goes by i appreciate you having you on more and more so th thanks for taking the time to do this oh absolutely guys it's a lot of fun i enjoy doing it so next week i i think it's next week oh my gosh i'll be at shot is it next week wow yep so I'll be trying to live stream as much as I possibly can. I will be giving you updates as much as I possibly can. Go check out Gun University because even Media Day at the range, which is less than a week away, I'll be doing nothing but taking pictures and making posts and telling you all my opinions on on what's what's cool and what's not. And uh, we'll check it out. So and we'll Jason, I don't think we'll be able to do a podcast together next week. It'll probably just be me. Okay, no problem. And any wagers on whether you end up with a new pistol? Because that's what happened last year. You ended up with a SIG P365 last year. Uh, I don't think so, but I'm open. I didn't think about that last time. We'll go see. Maybe I'll fall in love with the Glocks. Maybe the Glock 48 will just be awesome when I shoot it and, and feel it. I'll keep an open mind. Good, good, good. I'm happy to hear what you have to say. All I want to hear is Magpul coming out with the backpacker stock for the Ruger 9mm. They haven't announced that. They haven't even hinted at that. I just think that's the most logical thing they could possibly do. You know that takedown Ruger that shoots 9 mil and takes Glock mags? Yep. They make a backpacker stock, Magpul does, for the 1022, where it takes down in half and the barrel and handguard snap. Oh, yeah, the... yeah. To me, it's a no-brainer. Why would you not make that also same backpacker stock for the Ruger? Because it's the same like as the 1022. It's just bigger. I just think that'd be the coolest addition to those new Ruger nine mils as a backpacker. Style. Now I have an old classic AR seven, which yeah, is the old class like one. Yeah. It all fits into the stock and you can throw it in your backpack and, and it's been a great little 22. I mean, I've had that since I was geez, 15, 16. So what, what's Twyla making in the microwave? No, that's actually uh, the key lock for the front door. Oh, is it man? We, yeah. we need to get Twyla on here. How many, how many commenters and follow, guys following along on the chat do we need to get like a thumbs up to get Twyla to come on the podcast sometime? Oh, dude, are you guys ready for Twyla? Yes, we're ready for Twyla. It'd be hilarious. All right, guys, dude, you I'm... need to go make us a, a campaign to beg Jason to get Twyla on and tell oh, a story done. about how she didn't let him go to the processors and process their own meat and oh, and she grow, just growing up in Kodiak and Alaska and all that. She wants to tell the story where she outshot us on a camping trip with a little Daisy Red Rider BB gun. Was I there? Yep, you were there. No. What is, well, this sounds like Aunt Carol. <laughs> no, unfortunately, I was there to witness it. What? Yeah, you don't remember that, huh? No, so, apparently I don't want to. I, I tend to only remember things that happened. Yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> well, I guarantee you she's going to talk about it. All right. That's funny. Well, already getting thumbs up for it. So that would be hilarious. If she was up for it, I think it'd be a good change of pace. Oh, I should do it. I'll talk you know what we need it. to do is someone said, bring both wives on. I need to get April up here and let the girls run the podcast for an episode. That would be awesome. I'd have to give April a couple of drinks first. She just... <laughs> so she uh... can keep up, keep, keep up with Twyla. Oh, yeah. Not, not for drinking. I mean, for energy. Yeah. No, I don't think any of us can do that. Holy cow. <laughs> All right, man. You're awesome. Everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'll give you some updates from SHOT Show next week. Please contact your representatives. Please stay aware of what's going on, guys. Do not get lackadaisical. That's when it's going to bite us in the butt and think that it can never happen. So um, you guys are awesome. Keep telling friends. Keep supporting the show and Jason and I by clicking on those links, and we'll keep getting you guys cool giveaways on gununiversity.com. And, uh, yeah. Keep it up. I get to live a pretty charmed life because you guys support me to do it. So support me enough to keep me doing it, but not so much that Jason gets to do it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Take care, buddy. All right, buddy. Take care, everybody. <laughs>